so we looked at uh, 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 you know our first uh, sampling based method right so monte carlo algorithms where we did not have uh, uh, the knowledge of the transition dynamics and the reward and we actually uh, estimated the value function by doing this kind of sampling uh, trajectories from the mdp right so we just took a policy whatever is the current policy uh, that we are estimating the value function for we just uh, generate trajectories according to that and then we took the return as a sample for the took the average of the return right? so now <coughs> we can think of two dimensions along which uh, we have been uh, you know looking at things so the first one is what we call as bootstrapping right so bootstrapping essentially means that we are reusing right the values of uh, you know states that we have estimated in order to reestimate the values of the state so whenever there is a v on the right hand side and a v on the left hand side then we say that we bootstrap right so dynamic programming as we saw bootstraps right dynamic programming uses you know vk vk plus 1 of s uses vk of s on the right hand side to do the computation right so dynamic programming bootstrap monte carlo methods on the other hand do not bootstrap right monte carlo methods do not bootstrap because they take the entire return right they don't use the current estimate of the value function to reestimate the other value okay so that's the first part so bootstrapping likewise sampling is the second part right so in dynamic programming we don't sample we assume that the entire distribution is available to us right the some kind of an analytical form of the distribution is available to us so we can explicitly compute the expected values right so we don't have to do samples we don't have to estimate the expectation through samples we can explicitly compute the uh, expected value so dynamic programming does not sample well monte carlo methods sample because we don't have the uh, distribution so we have to actually uh, estimate the expectation by drawing samples from the distribution even though we don't have uh, access to the distribution directly so sometimes we say that uh, methods like monte carlo method right uh, can work in the absence of uh, complete model right um they can work in the absence of complete model as long as they have what is called as a sample model right they can work with the sample model they don't really you know you don't have to go to the world quote and quote and get experience from the real world right like right, the cycle so as long as you have a sample model it is fine so what we mean by a sample model right so think of you know playing a card game Think of playing a card game. Let's say know, whatever is your favorite game. Let's say rummy. Right? Think of playing rummy. So you can write a computer program. You can write a computer program to simulate a game of rummy. So I can be a player and I can simulate another opponent player uh, in the computer, right? And I can simulate how the cards will be dealt and everything. That is fairly straightforward to write a rummy program, right? So something that can simulate cards being dealt from a deck and all. That's easy to write. on the other hand if i ask you to write down okay what is the probability that the next card i draw from here is so much it is uh, sorry the next card i draw from here is the you know the ace of hearts right so for that you have to think about what are all the variables that you should condition on what are all the variables you should marginalize over so you should look at the hands of the other people what are all the various hands that other people could have and then you have to marginalize over that so it's actually a very very elaborate computation for you to write down that number so given that this is the hand that i have right what is the probability that the next card i draw from the pack is the ace of hearts i can write a simulator <coughs> that will do that for me right I can write a simulator that will give me the ace of hearts according to the true probability of drawing the ace of hearts but to write down what that probability value itself is will take a lot of computation right i have to look at all possible ways in which that is our hearts could potentially come from there so it becomes harder for me <coughs> to write down the complete model right write down the system model which basically is p of s prime comma r given s comma a, right to write down that model in 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 a close form uh, or an enumerated form is hard while a sample model which allows you to sample from that distribution right without actually ever writing down the distribution so those kinds of uh, things 
or sometimes easier to write like just like in the example of the card game i gave you or you can take any of these other examples we looked at robo soccer or 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 uh, uh, you know uh, all these atari games and everything that we have seen right it's very easy to generate sample models but hard to write down the actual transition policy so that is why sampling based methods like monte carlo and as we will see now uh, temporal difference methods are preferred over dynamic programming because we don't have to worry about the complete specification of the model so moving on so this is actually two dimensions is it right so there is this bootstrapping dimension and then there is a sampling dimension right? so at one corner you have dynamic programming that is no sampling right so i have full backups so i basically do the entire tree i change it remember that the uh, red uh, triangle that we drew in the game tree right the, the red triangle that we drew, drew earlier so that is basically dynamic programming right no sampling you compute the explicitly compute the uh, expectation and you don't uh, uh, you know uh, sam um, uh, you, you don't go into the future right you bootstrap heavily you just took one step ahead into the future and then use the value functions in order to come back right the on the other extreme that we have where we sample completely right and no bootstrapping at all right so we just take one sample and no bootstrapping at all that means that you go all the way to the end right so you have monte carlo so you have dynamic programming in one corner right you have you have dynamic programming in one corner and you have monte carlo in the other corner right on the other two corners are also interesting approaches so on the top right right where you do full backups right and you don't do any bootstrapping that means you go all the way to the end basically you explore not just you know so in dynamic programming you explore all possible actions you can take and look at all possible outcomes from those actions and then uh, 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 use the values at that point right in exhaustive search you do look can still consider the same thing all possible actions you can take and all possible outcomes from there but you don't bootstrap you continue doing the same thing right so then wherever you land up in the next day at s prime you look at all possible outcomes in s prime you keep going right so keep doing this but right, until you reach the end right in every branch that you are exploring until you reach the end in every branch that you are exploring so this is more like a classical search approach that we have in ai right of course there are many ways in which you can make this better uh, but uh, you know the, the most naive sense uh, the exhaustive search is kind of uh, sitting at the other corner right so where you have uh, no bootstrapping you have to go all the way to the end of your tree and you do full backups you don't sample and of course at the other end is uh, something that is of interest to us which is temporal difference learning which is td learning which we will now start in looking into uh, from uh, uh, the next slide onward actually where we bootstrap heavily right just like in dynamic programming right we bootstrap heavily so that means that we just look ahead one step and then use the value of the state there and we also sample heavily like in monte carlo method so monte carlo method take one sample right they don't look at the full uh, uh, all possible outcome they just take one possible uh, path right um, they take one possible path through the uh, uh, mdp right the, the one one possible project likewise in temporal difference learning we look at one possible transition just one transition one step over Right, that's all we look at, right? And uh, so that's basically uh, what the temporal difference learning. It so kind of combines the uh, you know advantage of uh, 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 bootstrapping with uh, sampling. Right? So that's uh, that's basically it. So uh, now temporal difference learning, bootstrap just like deep, uh, dynamic programming, and they sample just like Monte Carlo, and uh, we have a new algorithm. It's a very powerful uh, way of solving this problem. So, what are the advantages of uh, uh, bootstrapping? The advantage of bootstrapping is that you don't have to wait till the end, right? You don't have to wait till the outcome comes, and you have an estimate for your target as soon as you take one step, right? As soon as you look ahead one step, right? You know what uh, what is the change that have to make, like we saw in the tic tac toe example way at the beginning, right? Uh, and sampling is has this advantage that you don't need to know the dynamics, right? All you need to have is either a sample model. Or actual samples drawn from the uh, uh, real environment. Right? These are the only two things that uh, uh, I mean, you need, right? So that uh, so TD gets the advantage of both. Of course, it also gets the disadvantage of both. What are the disadvantage of both? So when you bootstrap, if you have really wrong estimates for your 
uh, states, right? You start off with really wrong estimates for your states, then your updates could potentially be incorrect. And so we know that in dynamic programming, regardless of what is your starting estimate, you will eventually convert, right? Uh, uh, in, in TD also, that's the case, right? Regardless of your starting estimate, you will eventually convert, uh, but it might take a very long time to happen if you start off with very wrong estimates for uh, your states. So that is one of the downsides of uh, bootstrapping. Okay, the significant upside is that so uh, the, the, the biggest uh, benefit is that uh, you don't have to wait till the final outcome and also that uh, you could use reuse uh, uh, information that you got from different samples uh, because you are using uh, bootstrapping. Okay, so that's the advantage and disadvantage of bootstrapping. And the disadvantage of sampling is that uh, you know, depending on what is the underlying distribution, your samples could have enormous variance, right? If there is huge amount of variance in the samples, and sometimes you might end up, uh, you know, sampling, uh, you know, things in a, in a pretty detrimental fashion. Uh, maybe you sample some of the corner uh, outcomes uh, to begin with, and therefore this can significantly affect your rate of convergence, and sometimes it might not even allow you to converge. But the the strong positive point of sampling is that A, you don't need to have the full uh, distribution specified a priori and B, if you are going to do the computation over the entire uh, possible space of outcomes, it might just be intractable. Right? So sampling allows you to run this in a uh, much more tractable uh, uh, fashion. Right? So that these are the advantages of sampling, the disadvantages. So it's so something to keep in uh, keep at the back of your mind. <coughs> Not that it's uh, uh, this way to affect whatever we see next. Right? Just to keep it. Clear.